Well, we're starting our last uh, tutorial for the term, and we're doing a waterfall from the Smoky Mountains. In this painting, we're going to be using a lot of dry brush, working on dry paper, concentrating on effective, strong strokes to depict falling water and uh, the rocks and greenery around it. Note how I'm using the brush. I'm calculating, even in this early stage, I'm calculating uh, the movement and thinking as simply as I can with the brush. I'm using a light blue, gray blue here to just paint the waterfall and get that shape recorded so that when I start with other colors, um, I can see where I want the water to be and I can work around it more effectively. So I'm painting the waterfall as a positive which is always easier. It's much easier to paint it as a positive and then work around it than to uh, even draw it and, and work around it. Adding some uh, ultramarine blue. This painting is ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, cadmium yellow, and neutral tint uh, to the whole painting. For the greens I'm using that cadmium yellow and neutral tint mixture. Uh, this green is representative of the foliage overhead and some of the green algae that's grown on the rocks. This is typical of waterfalls and and in the in the finished painting this color adds just a little spark of color which is a welcome relief to all the strong rich darks that the blues and the browns present. Look at those strokes. See I'm holding the brush and pushing, pulling, trying to create angles and movement this also is taking advantage of the rough paper and giving me broken edges and um, a feeling of uh, texture uh, which uh, we're exploiting to create these rocks. These rocks are, or rocks in general, have this rough texture and the rough paper uh, arches, 140 pound rough, has a really great texture for creating this sort of dry brush technique. The gray that I'm using here is a, is the mid-tone. It's the mid-value, which we talked about in the previous tutorial. The big mid-value, it's a mixture of ultramarine blue and uh, burnt sienna. This, uh, this gray is a mid-strength gray, and we'll be getting darker in uh, future layers, but this helps to isolate the, the shape of the waterfall. And the strokes that I'm using um, to preserve the white kind of follow the vertical nature of the waterfall. Uh, some whites I'm leaving within the rock surfaces to define uh, angles or breaks in the rock. So before I make the stroke, I'm really considering how this is going to be descriptive as a, as a stroke and not only the the local color, the color that I want to go there, but the angle of the stroke, the speed of the stroke, I try to consider those things as I'm painting it. So I'm very much thinking like a um, calligrapher would think, or a sumi painter from Japan, or black ink painter from China, uh, when they're making their brush marks. They're very concentrated on the angle and the um, the representation that's left. And I'm not really polishing them at all. I might be layering strokes on top of strokes, but I'm not uh, working to hide the strokes. I'm carrying this gray down, taking advantage of uh, the dry paper to get some rough edges near the waterfall and on the rock surfaces. Uh, continue to go to my palette with uh, a little different variation of this uh, brown and blue. Here I'm creating a, a unique face in the rock which has a lot of bright bright spots to it. So I'm going to leave it white for the moment with the knowledge that I'm going to go back later with a light wash after everything is dried and uh, put a slight tone to this rock. But for the moment, I'm very concentrated on catching the ang angularity uh, and the broken surfaces of the rock. 
as as this uh, stage is nearing completion, you can see the waterfall is coming out even more strongly. Parts of it are receding, the parts that we painted some blue into. Parts of it are actually jumping forward, which are the white of the paper. There's a feeling of falling water in some of those vertical rivulets. Uh, so we've done a good job so far to present the character of the waterfall. Now I'm going back with some of these richer darks. Same basic color combinations of burnt sienna, ultramarine blue, but using a little smaller brush, getting some finer marks, uh, hiding uh, the white that I don't need, building up the overall darkness uh, to, the, to the face of the rock, and uh, letting some of that even uh, continue into the water, uh, getting a little more drama now in the waterfall taking advantage of the, when the water is falling directly down, we see it uh, getting darker. We see it getting either bluer or darker. And this helps to create more dimension in the waterfall itself. Uh, the, this stage is a stage when we're apt to feel the most frustration because it's, it's a point where we're kind of working on faith that eventually as we add detail and nuance this image is going to come out but it's pretty raw right now so it's uh, sometimes it's even hard to see um, see the finished piece in your mind's eye and we work on <laughs> we work on faith I was gonna say blind faith but we can see enough to know that the, there's some possibilities here and as we add more blue you can see there's a more blue being added to edges and areas in the waterfall that tend to recede or fall vertically as, as in this area <clears throat> and we can start to see the dimension appear and that's a that's a welcome relief because uh, at moments it feels flat and uninteresting and we just we have to believe that what we're doing is is going to work out in the long run with more experience that uh, that act of faith becomes easier or not as stressful. Okay, we're, we're coming to some finalized states. You can see me glazing uh, some light ochre burnt sienna onto the rock surfaces. And as I do that, the white in the waterfall gains even more brilliance. The sunlight is really uh, arriving at a intensity that I like it. And I'm, I'm starting to feel very good about this piece more glazing and uh, touching some of the edges on the waterfall to soften them and putting in some of those smaller broken areas of the waterfall where the water divides and divides again and we see tiny rivulets and and uh, spouts kind of coming out of a larger passage so the brushes we're using are a little smaller the pace is more methodical less frenzied and the um, areas that we're working to are more refined areas. So we're, we're um, polishing, polishing the painting at this point. I'm pleased that I still kept a, a kind of energetic feel to the brushwork all through this painting. It's not easy to do. Our tendency is to want to refine and polish, but I kept it uh, feeling, well, rough, energetic, for a good part of this painting, and I think that creates a, a kinetic to the to the waterfall, a kinetic to the painting. In fact, there's a there's a feeling that it was done by hand and comes from the heart, and uh, that there's a an attachment to the subject. Again, kind of refining the right and left side around the waterfall muting some of the brighter spots and polishing some of the edges blending blending some of the edges to get a little softer feel to the water and uh, then now it becomes a matter of when to stop when is enough and uh, that's a tricky point too uh, we could easily stop at this stage and we probably will add a few more brush strokes to get some nuance and call it a day you can see as it's dried, some of those colors now have really gotten vibrant. And it's a, basically a, a three-color painting, a green, a blue, and a brown with some neutral tint. Um, 
the movement of the water is feels lively and active and I'm very pleased with this painting.